It's been one of my favorite papers since I did French back in school, all the way back. And yes, I could have done this joke in French, but English is much easier to think, for me at least. And they talked about in all day, 300 workers stormed the Peugeot plant and took possession of it for a couple of hours because they're upset with what is going on. Now, ask yourself the question, what does me having to face a bank and find two point something million dollars, an old book, no pun intended, because they're all old, uh, the British press and all those things have to do. They all relate to you because each one of you here and anyone as a young person in society or otherwise is going to be faced with some challenges. And they're all going to make you wake up. You can be in an organization like Bernie Madoff's and you can be responsible for a portfolio. And some one of your bosses can come to you and say, don't tell anybody that we're losing money. Or I will take you down with me. What do you do then? You could have been someone in the back of it, or know someone in a church who was, created, who was doing such a heinous act. Same thing could happen to you. It could be your parents working at Peugeot. These are all wake up calls because of the fact is, they are literally like this fire that is lit under your behind. Makes you jump up and immediately start doing this because you want to dust, you want to quench what is going on. So when you think about it from the standpoint of what is happening today in the world, every one of you here represents change. Personal change, group change, and global change. Because what you do, not today, not tomorrow, not next week, but for the rest of your life, as professionals, as power brokers, maybe as future politicians, influencers in business, whatever else, it is going to have a tremendous impact on how you live your life. But more importantly, it's going to have a tremendous impact on how other people live their life. How many of you are familiar with the movie Pay It Forward? <coughs> Have you ever seen that movie? It was a Kevin Sadie. Basically, the moral of the story is one good deed deserves another. And if I do something good for you, I'm not supposed to expect anything back in return, but I'm supposed to pay it forward. So I do something for somebody else. And that person does something for somebody else, and so on, until eventually what you have is you have this sort of, if you want to call it, a carousel of change that just keeps going around in a circle, and everybody benefits. When we think of waking up, we're thinking of it from the standpoint of, think of an alarm. Every morning you get up to go to school, how many times do you hit the snooze button before you actually get up? <laughs> That's a wake up call. But what you do is you hit snooze. Some hit it for 10 minutes, some hit it for 5 minutes, some try to throw it in a bucket of water and hope it electrocutes itself and you never have to get up. But the fact is at the end of the day, life's not like the snooze button on a clock. It's a completely different experience. It is actually something that happens regardless of whether you are there or not. You can walk out this building and get the most fantastic job offer. And you have to think to yourself, do I stay here and finish this degree? Or do whatever it is I'm doing now? Or do I exit out and do something completely different? You can also look at the impact. If I go and it doesn't work out, I have to start all over. Each one of those are wake up calls. So, my task today, when Carol asked me to do this, and I actually talked to Carol last year for her project management um, elective. So, it was an honor to have her actually ask me to do this, and quite surprising, because I was like, what did I possibly have to say? I teach her. She just says, you know, I give work, she does assignments, she, she, I grade them, she passes, and that's the end of the relationship. So it's kind of funny to be on the, on, the, on the other end of, I have an assignment for you, as opposed to constantly being the one giving assignments. But the question is, how do you become engineers of change? You only become engineers of change when you wake up. If you stay in this passive, half dead, life is passing me by, I don't know what to do, oh, poor me, despair, school is so hard, I have to, my friends don't like me. Someone befriended me on Facebook. You know, you know, you didn't respond to my tweets. You know, there are all these things. We live in an age of social networking. We 
we live in an age of technology where as soon as you say something, and I was having that conversation at lunch today, that simple thing <coughs> said, or posted on Facebook, or Twitter, or MySpace, or whatever your social media context is, becomes a reality faster than I can actually even blink. It's there. Sometimes, you can't take it back. Most of the times, even when you hit undo, it's not undone. It's only undone on your page. You know, it's not undone in life. So if you say something about one of your friends, and you put it on Facebook, despite the fact that you deleted it, it's still there. Everybody saw it. And it's not just everybody that you know, it's everybody that they know, and everybody that they know that they know, and so on. And it goes, goes on almost to infinity. There are millions, hundreds of millions of Facebook users, so you don't know who is seeing it. But more importantly, coming back to the point, a wake-up call is basically the time for you to come to action. Because every other time that you are doing nothing, and you're just sitting there waiting literally for the other shoe to drop. You're not awake. You're almost dead. You're not living. You're not doing anything. So it's important that you understand that wake up call is really an awakening. I chose something pretty simple when I was reading. I said to myself, and I can't find anything on this thing, so I'm just going to leave that as it is. Right? I talked about the fact that. You know, when I was doing writing a speech, it occurred to me, because I looked outside my window. And there was an owl, not mine, but somebody else's. And there are four rings of an owl. And when you think of waking up, what's the first thing that happens to you when you wake up? You're groggy. You're disoriented. Some of you probably just say, well, the first thing that happens when I wake up is I go back to sleep. You know, but you start by, first of all, by actually Listening to what's around you. That's part of being, that's part of a wake up call. You then have to, the wake up call is, hey, something has happened that I did not think could possibly happen to me. And I need to listen to this. And I need to understand this. Then after that, you have to regroup. Because everything that that wake up call did changes everything else that you do thereafter. <coughs> Nothing is the same. So for me, Two and a half years ago, getting up and having to pay money that I was not responsible for, everything is different. I had to change my lifestyle. I had to change the way I treat with seeing about my own investments, things that I may have left behind. And so, well, you know what? I can leave this to be dealt with by the people who are professional and deal with it, and I can just fall asleep at the wheel, literally, and not worry about it. Suddenly, I had to become more diligent. So I had to regroup. Then I had to make a plan. How do I prevent this particular thing from happening again? Very important. Because, here's the next question. Do you want an incessant array of wake-up calls or alarms in your head every single minute of every single day? Yes? Yes? You do? Because you don't sound like, it doesn't sound like a no. No, you don't. You want to have some level of, you know, smooth transition, you want to be able to relax, you want to be able to take in things in life. So you also have to make a plan. And you have to make that plan to go through the process so that you understand where you were. And you understand where you want to go. And finally, out of that, you need to progress. So when you think of it, that's what I saw when I looked at the rings of the Audi. Because of the fact is that what I saw was basically an opportunity to just simply go through the process and say, okay, fine. Things are changing in my head. So, things are changing. And those wheels are things changing. You know, I'm not focusing on the presentation because I said everything just changed basically because of the fact that I just got a text from someone regarding something. And as I said, that has not, the entire context of this conversation has needed to change a little bit to bring in the things that just happened. Because I will need to fly back for my grandmother's funeral, but I can't get a flight. So I'm actually going to miss the funeral, because there are no flights available for the day. So I have, again, a decision to make in terms of 
what am I going to do? Do I go home and miss that event, but still be home for family? Or do I stay here and finish what I have to do, which ends next Friday? So those are the decisions that I have to make in terms of that. So when you think of a wake-up call, and you think of the things that you need to do, put it in the context of how has what has happened to me impacted my life? But more importantly, put it in the context of what am I going to do about it? Are you going to go hide under the desk and not think? Are you going to simply try and blame someone else for what has happened? Or are you going to actually take that call to action, that awakening? It's like being awoken with a bucket of cold water. You're on your bed, and somebody just goes, splash, and suddenly you're up. How are you going to deal with that? Because it's very important for you, as young people, fortunately now I'm older than you all are, so therefore I get to kind of, you know, somebody say, no, they're older than, they're older than, than you in here. But old enough now, and experienced enough to know that you have to deal with situations in life. You can't run away from it. And the purpose of a wake-up call is for you to awaken, not to go back to sleep, not to hit snooze, but to get up and be those agents of change that you need to be, so that you, in turn, will make a better place for the next person who comes or approaches you for help. Thank you.